D.L. Moody, the great uh, evangelist that God used out of Chicago, said, Every one of our children can be brought into the ark if we pray and work earnestly for their souls and I say amen to that join me in prayer Holy Father God help us as parents to love our children enough to lead them to you Lord Jesus so that they can be saved and serve you throughout their lives in Jesus Christ name we pray and for his sake amen join me in reciting or reading the Nicene Creed it will mean something to you if you are truly saved and if you are born again uh, if you don't believe it do not say it if you believe it say it like you believe it and it will uh, speak to your heart as well because it is based upon the Word of God we believe in one God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord <clears throat> Jesus Christ the only Son of God begotten from the Father before all ages God from God light from light true God from true God begotten not made not created of the same essence as the Father through him all things were made for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven he became incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made human he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate he suffered died and was buried the third day he rose again according to the scriptures he ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead his kingdom will never end and we believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord the giver of life he proceeds from the Father and the Son and with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified he spoke through the prophets we believe in one holy universal and apostolic church we affirm one baptism for the forgiveness of sins we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and to life in the world to come and everybody said amen Please join us in reading our devotional Bible reading this morning, Psalm 59, 8 uh, through 17. But thou, O Lord, shalt laugh at them, thou shalt have all the heathen in derision. Because of his strength will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. Is God your defense this morning? The God of my mercy shall prevent me. God shall let me see my desire upon mine enemies. Slay them not, lest my people forget. 
scatter them by thy power and bring them down O Lord our shield for the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips let them even be taken in their pride and for cursing and lying which they speak consume them in wrath consume them that they may not be and let them know that God ruleth in Jacob unto the ends of the earth Selah and at evening let them return and let them make a noise like a dog and go round about the city and let them wander up and down for meat and grudge if they be not satisfied but I will sing of thy power yea I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning for thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble unto thee O my strength will I sing for God is my defense and the God of my mercy dr. Matthew Henry wrote in his fine devotional commentary regarding this passage it is our wisdom and duty in times of danger and difficulty to wait upon God in one of if you would allow me to add one of the most difficult things for proud and arrogant and little mighty might people like we are who think we can just handle everything by ourselves is to wait on God we have people in our family uh, who are in a hurry and in a rush they're proud they're arrogant they're stubborn they want to do things their way and uh, instead of waiting on God and letting him do it for them and uh, and that's always a tragedy it always ends up messed up you need to wait on God and let him pave the way for you and open up doors for you one of the most difficult thing things that Christians have to deal with in the Christian life is waiting on God let God pave the way for you first before you jump out there and then you're struggling and you are uh, bent out of shape and and uh, you're frustrated so wait on God and then uh, one of the Bible writers said again I say wait on God for he is our defense in whom we shall be safe wait on the train that God has for you and then when you get on that train God's train you'll be safe don't be in a hurry wait on God don't try to get ahead of God one of the thing one of the biggest sins that we commit as Christians is getting ahead of God the wicked the Bible says can I mean uh, the wicked the uh, text says from Matthew Henry uh, can never be satisfied uh, did you know that wicked people are never satisfied they're never content they're always like the white cap waters just always rushing back to the text which is the greatest misery in a poor condition he says a contented man if he has not what he would have yet he does not quarrel with providence in other words he does not quarrel with God nor fret within himself he is content it is not poverty but discontent that makes a man unhappy allow me to repeat that in your hearing three times 
it is not poverty. Some folks are smiling already. You know what I'm talking about. It is not poverty. It's not the one biscuit in the refrigerator that you're planning to eat the night before as your breakfast. It is not poverty, but discontent that makes a man unhappy or a woman unhappy. It is not poverty. It is discontent that makes a person unhappy. And sad to say, my beloved, we have many unhappy people in the church today. It's not your condition. It's not your environment. Stop lying. It's not even the person you're married to. Stop lying. You are not content. Rather, you're wicked and you're full of hell and the devil, and therefore you're never satisfied. David would praise God because he had many times found him his refuge in the day of trouble. He that is all this to us over more you gotta you gotta move over there. He that is all this to us is certainly worthy of our best affections praises and services can a Christian say amen join us now in praying for the estates praying for government leaders and praying for all other uh, leaders and many other people as well you say preacher I don't like to pray with you you pray too long no we're praying for others right now it takes just a little bit to do that. First Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Holy Father God, we pray for our president, President Donald Trump. We pray for salvation, spiritual, family, life, protection, blessings upon his life and upon his family and upon his administration. We pray that you would give him wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and insight, and we pray these same requests for Vice President Mike Pence, First Lady Melania Trump, Second Lady Karen Pence, Presidential Aides, Director of the Domestic Policy Council, Andrew Brimberg, uh, Leaders of Federal Agencies, uh, Administrative Conference of the United States, Vice Chair Stephen Crowley, uh, we pray for all state governors, Florida Governor Rick Scott. We pray for all city mayors, Reno, Nevada Mayor Hillary Shreve. We pray for all U.S. Senators, Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski. Uh, we pray for all U.S. Representatives. We pray today for California Representative Lou Correa. We pray for all police chiefs, Norfolk, Virginia police chief, Larry Boone, all sheriffs, uh, St. Uh, Louis County, Missouri Sheriff Jim Buckles. We pray the same blessings of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and insight uh, upon all of our military leaders, Mad Dog Mattis. General Glenn M. Walters, Assistant Command Commandant of the Marine Corps. Did I pronounce that right? Commandant? Back there in the back. 
that, that correct? We pray for all law enforcement officials. We pray for all leaders of nations around the world. We pray for our friend Jordan's King Abdullah II and Prime Minister Hani Al Amoki. And Holy Father God, we pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the next estate, the church, church leadership. We pray for the salvation of all religious people who are lost. We pray for all Christians who uh, are truly born again, that you'll revive us again. We pray for the leaders of the Evangelical Free Church of America. We pray for Superintendent Bruce Campbell, uh, Superintendents Bruce Campbell, Noah Palmer, and Sam Haggard. And we pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and insight for them to lead their part of the church uh, family. We also pray for current events around the world. We pray for the 20,000 people plus who have been displaced by violence in Bangladesh. We pray for the salvation, protection, and safety of all those affected by Hurricane Harvey. Uh, for the comfort of the families of the 21 people and a rising number of people who have died. We pray for protection for and provision for South Sudanese refugees fleeing violence and political instability in their country and we pray that you'll comfort them as only you can for you're the God of all comfort and help us to be a instrument of, of your comfort to others as well and uh, we thank you Lord for blessing us to give some money yesterday but more money needs to be given today and Lord, we pray that you'll help us to do that. We pray for peace to prevail in Myanmar and for the comfort of the families of the over 90 people who have been killed in violent clashes there. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem based upon your holy word, Psalm 122.6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. And we pray for persecuted Christians around the world. Uh, we pray uh, that you would give them grace in your trying, in their trying hours, and in their dying hours, as you have done for so many years. And Holy Father God, we pray for the next estate. We pray for the media. Uh, we pray for uh, Fox News staff we pray uh, that you would give them wisdom knowledge understanding and insight uh, to report the news as it is truthfully and honest honestly and not to make up news we pray for Ainsley Earnhardt we pray for Kimberly Guilfoyle and we pray for Greg Gutfeld and we commit these souls into your hands let your will be done in their lives we also pray for the prayer requests, the people who have sent in prayer requests to our ministry here at Gospel Light Society and Gospel Light House of Prayer. We pray for Laura in Worcester. Bless her as a single uh, mother. Uh, provide her with a nice apartment to live in for her family. School supplies and clothes and shoes for her children uh, and I Patricia uh, and her children rather and I believe Lord in my heart you're going to provide this for her and uh, do you have the other, the other lady from yesterday morning that, that, that's her this lady right here okay and Holy Father God we pray for Patricia I have Jarrell Gabriel and Joy to come to know Jesus Christ as Savior. Of course, you know, being an evangelist, I love these these uh, uh, prayer requests here. When you're praying for somebody to be saved, we need more of that. Uh, fill them with your Holy Spirit once they're saved as well. And we thank you for this dear lady. 
praying for her family members to be saved. We pray for Marie uh, Dimsdale. Have her to continue to trust in you and lean on you. And we pray for Edmund. Uh, please save his bosses. Stir up the hearts of his family for ministry. Bring about repentance and cleansing of the church. We pray for Alina. Please deliver her from all demonic forces that paralyze her. Uh, save her neighbor and mother. We pray Anoja, for Anoja. Please deliver him from the power of perverted thoughts and actions. And we pray for Gary. Please save his wife. Help her not to be angry and help her not to believe everything people say about him. Please heal Gary of his disability and chronic pain and memory loss. We pray for Martina. Please have Nick to come to know you as his savior. Please improve his situation in life. We pray for Bill. Please bless him with a pastoral opportunity if that is your will for his life. We pray for Patrick. Please save him and his family. Deliver them from violence and confusion. Please heal them from psychologically, from psychological sickness. Help him to be to get married, uh, be with his mother and father. Protect them from the devil and the world. We pray for Marie. Please provide her and her family with a new house that meets their needs. Have them to find favor with people and have the paperwork to go smoothly. We pray for Esther. Please bless her as she fasts. Be with her son, her husband, her mother, and Bronica, and her children. Bless them with the funds they need. And Holy Father God, we pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the people who have gotten saved through this ministry. And uh, we pray that you, you would help these to grow in the faith. We pray for Brianna. We pray for Silvano. We pray for Rhett, we pray for William, we pray for Divya, and we pray for Hasanu and Kuami. And we pray for the people who have, uh, or, or who are already saved, but uh, they heard the gospel preached through this ministry and recommitted their lives to you. Uh, something that we don't even give an invitation for. And we pray for George, we pray for Egol, we pray for X, and we pray for Fuad, we pray for Karen. We pray for joy and we pray for Helena. We commit these souls into your hands. Let your will be done in their lives and our lives as well. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, our devotional reading uh, for today is titled Usefulness or Relationship by Oswald Chambers. Usefulness or relationship. Luke ten twenty says, Do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven Jesus Christ is saying here don't rejoice in your successful service for me but rejoice because of your right relationship with me because the reality is because of your right relationship with me is the reason why if you have any success uh, it is because of your right relationship with me not anything that you have done so don't glory in the wrong thing glory in me amen somebody I added that part now back to the text the trap you may fall into in Christian work is to rejoice in successful service 
rejoicing in the fact that God has used you. Yet you will never be able to measure fully what God will do through you if you do not have a right standing that is relationship with Jesus Christ. If you keep your relationship right with Him, then regardless of your circumstances or whoever you encounter each day, He will continue to pour rivers of living water through you. And it is actually by His mercy that He does not let you know it. I want to repeat that part. I want you to get that part. If you keep your relationship right with the Lord, then regardless of your circumstances or whoever you encounter each day, He will continue to pour rivers of living water through you. And it is actually by His mercy and grace, if you will, that He does not let you know it. Once you have the right relationship with God through salvation and sanctification, remember that whatever your circumstances may be, you have been placed in them by God. And God uses the reaction of your life to your circumstances to fulfill His purpose as long as you continue to walk in the light as He is the light. Our tendency today is to put the emphasis on service. Beware of the people who make their request for help on the basis of someone's usefulness. If you make usefulness the test, then Jesus Christ was the greatest failure who ever lived. For the saint, direction and guidance come from God himself, not some measure of that saint's usefulness. It is the work that God does through us that counts, not what we do for him. All that our Lord gives his attention to in a person's life is that person's, relation, that person's relationship with God. Something of great value to his father. Jesus is bringing many sons to glory. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the name name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would help us always to remember that our relationship with you is what breeds success in ministry and not vice versa. Help us to always point to you. Help us to always look to you and help us to always give you the glory praise and honor in any good thing that we might do and understand that it is about our relationship with you first that we could be useful in any way for your glory, praise and honor. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake, amen. Now beloved, if you happened upon us this morning uh, from the World Wide Web, the Internet, if you do not yet know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, uh, today is your day. For Jesus Christ says to you in John 3.16 in the Holy Bible, For God so loved the world. That includes you that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now just realize that you are a sinner, 
that you are a bad person who has done bad things. You've done bad things because you have badness in you. You were born in sin and you were born with a sinful nature and that's why you sin. And however, because of your sin, uh, you are on the way to a devil's hell. I know that sounds pretty rough first thing in the morning, but that's the reality. Sin uh, brings about death, and sin brings about eternal punishment in a place called hell. Sin is a terrible thing. just think about the fact you're living one day uh, drinking coffee at Starbucks eating cupcakes at Little Cakes and the next day you're dead because you got into a car accident that's how bad sin is it is extremely painful death uh, and uh, and shocking uh, even to us today and but that's what sin brings about death that's what sin brings about death and if you don't trust Jesus Christ as your Savior who paid for your sin debt uh, the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world if you don't believe on him for your salvation then uh, you will go to hell forever and that's what Jesus said. That's what the Bible says. And we're not talking about church membership. You can join a church and still go to hell. We're not talking about taking communion on Saturday afternoon or Sunday morning. You can do that and still go to hell. We're not talking about getting baptized you can do that and still go to hell. I got baptized at the age of 12 and was lost and on my way to hell. I didn't get saved until I was 19 by the grace of God. And in between that time I almost went to hell. I am here only by the grace of God and saved and in my right mind. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today for your salvation Pray and ask him to save your soul and he will save you. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 13, that if thou, that if you, shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God hath raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. For whosoever, that word whosoever means anybody at any time, no matter what you've done. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you ready to call upon the name of the Lord right now? I'll be glad to lead you in what is called the sinner's prayer. Uh, this is calling on the name of the Lord for salvation. Repeat after me, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have sinned against you. And I understand according to your holy word from the preacher that if I die without trusting you as Savior, I would go to hell. have mercy and grace upon my soul and for Jesus Christ's sake please forgive me of all of my sins as I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ Lord Jesus please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past. 
and to follow you in the new life on into heaven by your grace understanding that it is not anything that I have done in Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake Amen dear friend of mine if you just trust it Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it from your heart I declare to you that based upon the Word of God in the Bible you are now saved from sin and hell and you're on your way to heaven welcome to the family of God dear friend I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior for more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet what to do after you enter through the door Jesus Christ said in John 10 9 I am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture until next time my beloved may the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer